Welcome back to another Reading and Correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you're looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we're doing Chapter 18 of A Series of Death. Marlot savored the meat along with a glass of blood, both warmed to body temperature. It wasn't exactly the same as ripping flesh off a body, but after more than a week of the artificial stuff, he might as well be rolling into into a body's bloody remains for how good it felt. He felt well enough that at, when he remembered Tremor was who he'd done that with, he didn't spiral down into sadness. The portion wasn't lar as large as he'd like. He had, es es he had Eskiriel cut them smaller to stretch how long it would last him. If running out had taught him anything, it was that he'd rather eat a little less with each meal than run out again. Seated, sated and feeling better, Marlot had an easier time going back to his training, even alone. Drebor was a popular gym, and there were always a handful of people there without partners, so pairing up was as simple as checking and putting a name on the schedule. After a week, he'd cleared two of his bodies out of the freezer and had to ensure he had the money for his next hunt. He took and wait. And to ensure he had money for his next hunt, he took side work, cleaning malicious programs out of computers and tracking a hacker for someone who wasn't interested in having the enforcers look into her life. And since he'd have the money, he found people to add to his stalking program. As a way to stay busy and not think of Trembor's vanishing scent, Marlowe made a copy of his stalker program and altered the parameters, trying to get it to anticipate a predator's movement instead of a prey. It should be easy. All he had to do was program in how he thought. Unfortunately, instinct wasn't something he spent a lot of time analyzing, and computers didn't process that well. The one thing he could easily deal with was programming in the need for a predator to hunt. He could even link it to the kiosk database to analyze hunting pattern using the rating system. Technically, the database was private, but those kiosks were public and connected to it, so the company managing them couldn't complain about someone pulling more information out of them than they'd intended. Greed had consequences. While a stalker 2.0 sniffed out the data, Marlowe looked for other ways he could have it build profile of people. Could he use ID to track a predator's movement? Those weren't like tracking a car via its tag. The city's incomplete camera coverage ran through a series of public servers, so intercepting that information was easy enough. IDs were almost exclusively used in private transaction. The one place you could think where they could be used over a public system was the public transit, and not enough people used that to build a reliable picture. It would also require obtaining someone's ID before they were in danger, and right now, he wasn't sure he'd have enough time from the moment he received it to when they might die to do more than run a cursory check. Sitting back and looking at the data publicly available on prey and predator movement, Mar Marlo wondered if prey did what he was doing now writing programs to, make out be to map out behavior, work out what part of the city to avoid, and if any did, could he get Stalker 2.0 to infer those prey's behavior once it was done? Could tracking predator increase the is available pool of prey? That was an interesting thought, something he'd be able to work on once the hunter was caught and brought to justice. He'd be able to show Trembor how using technology wasn't that much more different from how he hunted. It simply added to it. His typing slowed, and he found himself sniffing the air, searching for any trace of his lion, of the lion. He looked at the empty desk, fought the sadness that built, and took out his pad. Hey, Trem, it's me again, he said once he started the recorder. I miss you. He wanted to tell him about his work, about Stalker 2.0, how he'd screwed up with the moose, but for that he needed Lion to reply, to comment, roll his eyes, fold his ears. 
you need a tremor sitting at the desk or at least breathing on the other side of the conversation. They'd never been big on leaving each other messages. This was too much like talking to himself. I wish you were here to tell me what, you, what set you off. I know I've said this on every other recording, but how else do you expect me to fix things? To explain why I did whatever I did, even if I even did anything. Right now, it looks like what set you off is that I said no. Is that it? Am I not, I'm not the helpless, pliable male I was when we met, and you can't deal with that? If that's the case, why did you work so hard at helping me be, rebuild my confidence? The console, had made, the console made sure to rip to shred. He fell silent, considering shutting, and he fell silent, considering shutting off the computer, the recorder. I don't believe it. You don't want things easy. You don't want someone to control. If you would have been bothered by me outgrowing your shadow, you'd have set me free, not walked out. You're not callous. I just, what happened? I want to fix this, but I can't do that if you won't talk to me, he sighed. Once I've cut the hunter, I'll bring him to you. You'll see I'm not... The knock at the door caused him to fumble the with a, fumble the pad. Fumble the pad as he hurried to turn off to, to turn the recorder off. He then felt silly for being embarrassed as Elahan entered and handed him a few envelopes along with data slates. Those would have updates on his bodies, hopefully. People who traveled always ended up being more complicated cased. All those, all those out-of-city connections made building the full pictures difficult. He forgot about those on seeing the Revenue Bureau stamp on the, in the corner of an envelope, ripping it open and watching the ID card fall out, bounce, and settled on the desk. The face of a bobcat looked at him. Delmer Shortfur. He entered her name in Stalker 2.0 and watched the result. Delmer Shortfur, female, 38, factory supervisor those results he expected, the perversion of the same. She was another mid-level productivity, 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 pr productive. No, mid-level productivity, predator. Did the hunter target that productivity range? Or was it simply that those were the people in his surrounding? The latter seemed more likely. He didn't pay for the meat, so rating wouldn't, shouldn't impact his decisions. Delmer's hunting record appeared on the screen, courtesy of the connection to the kiosk's rating system. She kept to prey in her mass range, erring on the side of lower value rather than risking going over budget. Then, Stalker 2 Pointer added him a surprise. A city map with the location where she paid for her kills. He hadn't expected that, but realized it made sense. The map was part of Stalker 1.0, and while technically where she paid shouldn't be public data, <clears throat> it would remain attached to the recording of her kills and the placement within the rating system. She had three preferred hunting grounds and approached them from the direction, from different direction each time. She'd paid at the closest kiosk to her, to her car, and the map showed she used different ones around the hunting grounds. Her latest kill was only a week old, so that one that was one aspect of it. This Marvel didn't have to worry about this time. She wasn't going to go out and turn herself into prey out of desperation. Stalker 2.0 brought up her work records. She'd scan into work this morning. Not her ID, but a work issue identification. Could she not know her I She'd lost her ID. She drove, so no need for it on, on it for, trans for it on transit. She had food, no need to pay for that. And until she ran out of some minor thing, she wouldn't need it for anything else. Or, she was confident in her ability to fight off anyone realizing she was without ID long enough for a replacement to arrive. Did this mean the hunter needed to strike before that happened? No, it couldn't. He sent the card to Marlote as the invitation to take part, not as part of the killing ritual. Right? Marlote rubbed his temple. He didn't know enough about how this hunter did what he did. Why didn't any of the researchers build more accurate profiles on them? He looked at the screen. More information on it indicate, indicated Delmer occasionally used transit. Could he notify Stalker 2.0 to build the patterns for Hunter? Did he want to tackle version 3 before he was even done with 2? Another project to add to the list of things to keep busy once the Hunter was caught. He turned off the screen, letting Stalker 2.0 work so he could access it while he was out, and left his office.
I'm heading out, he told Alain. I might not be back today, he paused at the door. Or tomorrow? I need to deal with something. The hunter didn't always kill within hours of Marvel receiving the ID, so he might be watching Delmer short for, for a few days. Do you want me to forward calls to you or the buffer? She asked. The buffer. I'll access it through the day. I'll access it throughout the day. Unless a body showed up in his territory, he didn't expect anything urgent. Unless it's Trimber. If he called, transfer him to my pad. He could hope. It wasn't like he had much else right now. And this concludes chapter 18 of A Series of Death. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. <clears throat> if you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story, the book, as well as the others in the series, they are available on all major e-retailer. If you are looking for a different way to support me, that is on my Patreon, where you can also get access to just about everything else I've written. And if you're looking to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.